Hi everybody, welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler and in today's video we are going to look at a genetics exam question from a past paper. This particular one is something that I would rank as hard and the reason for that is it is not a difficult question in terms of the content knowledge that you need to have. Rather, it's hard because a lot of people don't get full marks for these kinds of questions that we're going to look at today. Um, and the reason for that is they are explanation questions around genetics. Very often, we can, ex we can um, do a genetic cross and we can identify the type of dominance, but we really struggle to explain the inheritance pattern and we don't often get full marks. So that's why I've cataloged this one as a harder question. Now, if you'd like to pause the video now so you can attempt the question, please do so before I walk you through the answers. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post new content every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are in currently in matric and you would love to get a distinction at the end of the year, then you should think about joining my uh, membership. You can join my membership on my YouTube homepage. You just click the join button and you can have a look at all the different perks that come along with it. Things including um, live lessons with me, my cheat sheet summary notes, and so much more. So let's get into the video and break down this question. Um, I also chose this question because there's often a, a request to go through blood groups because blood groups are quite a tricky topic considering that they combine two different kinds of dominance at the same time. So it says Mr. and Mrs. Fonella are concerned that their baby girl does not appear to resemble either of them. They suspect the baby they were given at the hospital is not theirs. Uh, Mr. Fonella is blood type AB while Mrs. Fonella is blood type B. Um, the baby they were given at the hospital was blood type O. Now, before we go any further, what I always tell my matrix to do is to work out a couple of things before you continue because it's going to make your life a lot easier. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate and just quickly figure out what are the possible alleles for these individuals. And before we even answer the questions, we may be even able to tell whether or not this child is theirs. So I'm going to start off with the most easy individual, which will be the child, the baby. And it's easy because individuals who are blood group O can only have one possible um, allele set, which is two lowercase i's. And I want to remind everyone that you can only use letter i's in your final exam. Then if we look at the dad, Mr. Fonella, you can see that he is blood group AB, which means that his only possible alleles are going to be capital I with an A and capital I with a B. There is no other possible combinations. Now, looking at Mrs. Fonella, she's blood group B, and blood group B has two possible outcomes. So she can either be a capital I with a capital B on each of the I's, or she can be capital I with a B and then a lowercase i. So those are her options. Now, already, now looking at the child, the baby's blood group, which is two lowercase i's, the only way that's possible is if they inherited a lowercase from one and a lowercase from dad. Now, it would be maybe possible if uh, we got a lowercase i from mom. But if we have a look at dad, he does not have a lowercase letter i. So it's definitely not um, his child. Um, it may be mom's child, uh, but there's no certainty yet um, uh, whether or not they're going to ask that. But already we can tell this is not their child. So now let's get into the actual questions itself. It says, give the possible genotypes of Mrs. Fonella, which we have, which are these two over here. Those are the, remember, genotypes, not the phenotype. And then it asks for the baby girl, which we've also done. We worked it out earlier, so it's nice and quick and easy. And you should also let the mark allocation guide you over there because you can see that for Mrs. Fonella, she has two um, possible genotypes, therefore there is two marks. But then we look at the next question. And the next question says, explain why baby girl, uh, the baby girl with blood group O cannot be Mr. and Mrs. Fonella's daughter. 
As I said to you now, it's not possible because of the way you inherit alleles. So how do you actually answer this to get full marks? Well, to do this, and it is out of three marks, there is a template answer that I would encourage you to use for all these kinds of explanations when it comes to explaining inheritance from parent to child. And you can use this same template formula answer every time you just substitute in the particular example you're working with. And so this is how it goes. Number one, you're going to talk about what are the parents. Okay, so you're going to say, what is the parent's genotypes? Then you're going to say, what is the child's genotype? And you're going to round your answer off by saying how you inherit one from each parent. And because you inherit one allele from each parent, it would not be possible for you to have this particular child. And so this is the formula that I would encourage all of you to use for every kind of explain question like this one, where they want you to explain inheritance from parent to child. Looking into the next question, it says, explain why the use of blood typing for paternity tests is not conclusive, which basically means that you need to explain why can't you use paternity tests or blood tests for paternity um, and why is it not conclusive? In other words, it's not reliable. And again, this is for two marks, so we want to pay attention to the mark allocation. And here what you need to do is you need to explain why using blood groups and, and, and blood testing is not uh, necessarily a reliable source. The reason for that is, um, number one, one of the reasons is that um, many men have the same blood group as each other and they might have the same blood group as their child but that doesn't mean that that child is theirs just because they have the same blood group. The second thing that I want to really emphasize is this. Um, blood type um, and paternity testing, they can only exclude men, but they cannot confirm fathers. So the key that we are looking for here is that you can exclude fathers, but you cannot confirm a father. Um, and for example, if we look at just as Mr. Fornella as an example, that cannot be his child. So we can exclude him. Um, but let's say there was another man who um, was the possible um, father of this particular baby in this question. Just because he has blood group O, um, now it doesn't exclude him. However, it can't confirm it either. Now, I've given you three answers there, but you only really need two. Then we move on to our next and final question. It says, using your knowledge of sex chromosomes, explain why the sex of the child is determined by the male gamete. Now, this is for five marks. This is a juicy question. Um, five marks is a lot when it comes to explaining. And again, there is a formula to how you are going to answer this. Now, this particular formula is very, very similar to the one that we did in the earlier question, this one that I've starred up here, but I'm just going to quickly rub that out. And I'm going to show you what I mean by it's very similar in its structure when it comes to how you're going to structure this answer out. So it, it follows a similar thing, except this time, instead of telling me what the parents and the child is, what you're going to do is, number one, you're going to tell me what females are, right? You're going to tell me that females are XX. Then you're going to go on and tell me what males are, and males are X, Y. From there, what you're going to do is you are going to state who is inheriting or who is passing on what trait. Now, in this point, you are going to say that females, okay, they can only uh, give a letter X, right? But for your fourth point, you can say that males, they can give either a X or they can give a Y. If they give an X chromosome, you are going to have a female. If you are going to give a Y chromosome, you will have a male child. And that is going to give you, and by the way, that is your fifth point, that is going to give you your five out of five. So I'm just going to recap. You're going to say what the female is. You're going to say what the male is. You're going to say that females can only give the letter X, whereas males can give an X 
which makes a female child, or a Y, which makes a male child. And that is how you end up getting five out of five. And again, this is why I said that this question is not difficult, but to get full marks, you really need to know how to structure your question, oh, sorry, your answer really, really well. Now, here is the memo for you to just go through once again. And I suggest, again, that you focus on the explanations provided in 232 and 234. Again, use the template answer that I suggest in the beginning of the video. You can apply it to every single inheritance explanation question that they ask you. It doesn't matter whether they ask you about red-green color blindness or they ask you about dwarfism, it doesn't matter. You can use exactly the same template answer for every single exam answer. You just substitute in the example that they are using. And this is what I use with my students and it works so well. And that is how you are going to do well in your exam. That's how my students do well in their exams. Now, I hope you've all enjoyed this video. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again soon. Bye.